Welcome each and every one of you to this fabulous morning uh, of storytelling and a fabulous workshop put on by Carolina Kiroga Stoltz. Carolina is joining us right now um, from North Carolina, and we are excited that many of you are here and have come back to join us. This is going to be wonderful. Those of you who are here, my name is Sue Kuntz, and I am the president of the San Antonio Storytellers Association. And with that, I want you to know that uh, along with the Texas Storytelling, uh, Teja Storytelling Association, we are both sponsoring this workshop to you all for free. And I uh, want you to know that anybody would like to donate to this workshop are always welcome. I will be putting a donation link in the chat. The donation will be split, uh, proceeds will be split through um, to TSA and SASA so that these workshops and concerts will continue throughout the year and through, through all the guilds that are represented through TSA. So again, welcome each and every one of you. At the end of this workshop, I want you to know there will be a Q&A and you'll be able to either use the reactions uh, little font down there on the very bottom um, to raise your hand, or if you're not sure how to do that, you can just raise your hand and I will mediate between Carolina, Carolina and you when it comes to those questions. So have those ready to go. Um, David Brock will also be looking for any questions in the chat to help out towards the end and would also like to thank Chester Weems and Dean Keith, who is our host um, and they are all co-hosts along with him for helping us out through this morning. Let me tell you a little bit about Carolina and her workshop. This particular workshop is called Recrafting a Tale. Let your body tell the story. And through gestures and words, Carolina can flawlessly transform herself into many characters through one story. And that is truly amazing. If you've not seen Carolina, you will today, but her storytelling, you could hear her through many of her festivals and school outings um, and um, corporation gatherings throughout the world. She has truly shared her Latin um, base with everyone and not just through stories but through her dance she is fabulous but one thing we noted were her facial expressions when she was living with us here in san antonio for what seems to be a very short time for us we miss carolina so much but it's so nice to have her on zoom right now and very quickly i want to read her bio which i just thought was just as wonderful as can be Caroline, Carolina brings that Latin culture through stories and dance to all of us. Now, Carolina writes, my friendship with storytelling began early in life. I disappeared from my mom's sight. And of course, my mother was feverishly looking for me in the supermarket. And after all exit doors had been closed, my mother found me behind a clothing rack full of dresses. I had found a pleasant hiding spot where I could just read aloud a book. What can I say? I've always enjoyed a good book. And even though that book, it was upside down. <laughs> and before becoming a full-time storyteller and a teacher artist and a podcaster and a writer, yes, she is an author. Her life has taken many twists and turns Carolina graduated as an engineer, a journalist, and even in arts management. Eventually, she found the power of story. And in 2023, she graduated from East Tennessee State University with a master's in, you know, storytelling. And since then, she's told many stories in numerous library schools, colleges, festivals across the United States and around the world. These days, she is now in Asheville, North Carolina, looking to connect with, oh, all those artists that are over there and start a new life with her husband, Spencer, and her sweet, sweet doggy, Porter. I will be posting her website and again, that link to PayPal if you would like to donate. Without further ado, I bring you Carolina Quiroga Stoltz. Yay. 
Thank you, Sue. That was lovely. Um, well, I'm very, very happy to be here today. And this is take two of the workshop, <laughs> improved. Um, so Dean, can you, will, will you share the presentation for me? Is Dean here? I think he- yeah, Sorry. Um, yeah, I hadn't got it ready yet. So, but give me just a minute and I will get that up. Okay, well, in the meantime, <clears throat> Um, I wanted to thank you all for being here today. I was a little nervous because, of course, you're all storytellers. And what can I teach you uh, if, you're, if I learn so much about from you guys? Um, but then while I was reflecting on, on, on the workshop, I began thinking that a lot of times I do get at the end of a story the the compliments, but a lot of the compliments are pretty much the same. Carolina, you are very expressive. Carolina, I, I could see that you brought that to life. I could see it in my head. So because of your, you know, the expressions you do with your face and the voices you do and how you move your hands. So I figure, well, I guess I, 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 can, I can bring some of that in and share that with you today. And one of the things I learned in, in through telling stories is that our bodies are our best instruments. And we can learn so much of um, how a person is feeling just by the way they are moving their hands or the way their where their eyes go, how their mouth is moving, how their face is tilting to one side or the other, how their shoulders are, are going up or down or in or out and, and I feel that we can use a lot of those little cues and gestures uh, and we can bring it into our characters and just enhance a little bit more the, the storytelling and instead of just like, you know, once upon a time and blah, 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 and he did this and he did that. And we just like talking and talking because that's what we were told. We were told to use our words, but we were not exactly told how to use our bodies and how to make the best of it. So the idea of this workshop is precisely to work on a little bit of that, um, kind of uh, work on what you already know and do, but just stretch it a little bit more and ex uh, experiment a little bit about what else can you do about it. Um, so I am guess, um, Dean, are we, or there we go. Yeah, there we go. Yes. Awesome. I hope you all can see it. So can we move to the next one? Dean, can you hear me? Yes, I'm sorry. Did uh, Is the next slide up? Yeah, yeah, you can go to the next one, to the second one. This one? Uh, the one with the tools. Are you seeing it? No. Okay, let me try it again. <laughs> How about now? Yes, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Mm, oh yeah. Okay, so um, we are performers, right? Uh, we're not only storytellers, but we perform. The moment we go on stage, we're literally performing, bringing something to life. And our tools are our movements, our gestures, the sound effects, because all of that is going to complement and enhance the story. And you already know that. So, but what we're trying to do here is per maybe perfect some of that or perhaps consider bringing a little bit more in other spaces in the story. So next slide. And I always bring this one to all my workshops, no matter what kind of workshop I'm teaching, because um, Howard Gardner, he researched and did a lot of observations and, and he concluded that there's nine types of intelligence existential, musical, kinesthetic, interpersonal, all of those. But what I want to say is that we, most of us, we grow up um, believing and we were told that basically there were at least three types of intelligence, musical, such as Mozart and Beethoven and Chopin, um, 
There's the linguistic and in that one falls all writers and politicians and, or, and teachers too, and logical. So all the science and all the engineers fall on that one. And if you don't have any of those like well-developed, then you're not that smart. <laughs> um, but this is also to say that, uh, yes, we have ignored a lot of the other ones, but now these days we are more aware of it and we have all those multiple intelligence in our audience, which means that when you're telling a story, there's a good chance that you have a bunch of kinesthetic people there. And if you're just telling a story with words all the time and, and that person is not moving or doing anything, there's a chance that that kid might not connect with your story as successfully as, as you would want it to. Um, if maybe that person is more, you have some kids in the audience that are more naturalistic, they will be more connected with a story that has to do with animals. But also if you bring props and all that, so that helps them connect with that nature that will totally help um, and enhance the experience. This is not to overwhelm you, but just to uh, stress a little bit again, the necessity that we use our body as an instrument because we can actually connect with all of this intelligence if we use our bodies a little bit more on stage. So next slide. All right, so let's start diving into movement. Um, I always try to find an opportunity for movement uh, when I, um, I identified verbs in the script, in the story, and I try to turn it into a movement. And that's the easiest, right? So rain, walking, flying, right? Singing, thinking, cooking, or cooking. But if you see, I'm not only using my hands, but I'm also using my, maybe my, my face, my expressions, um, and I'm using my voice. So it's three, three things at least that I'm using uh, just to convey that verb. But I could just say, and it was raining. And he was walking. And he was flying. It doesn't say much. It, uh, or it just feels much. Um, it feels like you're displaying the whole theater when you actually move your hands. And he was flying. And it was raining right? And he was singing. And you could say, you could see how my hands are projecting that voice, those notes, those melodies coming out and moving into the air, right? Um, in terms of movement, I also use ASL. I borrow a lot from ASL. Um, I'm, the rain is one that I always borrow. But for instance, uh, fish, this is a fish. A river, this is a river, right? So I, I try to borrow a lot of movement from ASL whenever I can. And I try to use it uh, intentionally in, uh, in stories where I use call and response or when I ask the audience to participate and do it with me because uh, again, I'm trying to engage those that are more kinesthetic or uh, are more like tune or melody oriented. So moving and singing and doing that also helps them to stay um, engaged. Now, if we go into voices and sound effects, I, I try to do, create distinctive voices for my characters. For instance, there's a story called Elefantito, which is um, why the elephants have a long trunk. And in that story, there's seven different voices, which is a lot. It is a lot. Um, and I do normally, if, you, if you're just starting to, you, you were not yet that comfortable doing so many voices, I would say start with one or two, which is the main character in the, and the, the one that is um, his arch enemy or the villain, or is just the, the, the opposite of it. But once you start feeling more comfortable with it, you can definitely start uh, adding more voices, especially those those characters that you think will add up, will add to the story. So we'll go more into all this in a minute. Um, but let's go on to onomatopoeia sounds. Those are more. Um, oh, Dean, can you go back for a second? Thank you. Those are some of my favorite ones. And, and what I do is that I replace the sound for the word. 
So instead, instead of saying, and it splashed, right? I just say, and it splash or crash. And she was running through the, through the woods and I don't say scratch. I just go scratch, right? And I do the movement. Um, or and he was right instead of saying and he was so cold that no I mean it's it's I'm, I try to be I call that to be effective or efficient in terms of what I'm saying sometimes you don't have you have a, a story of 10 minutes or five minutes you cannot go over so the more you use words the more you're using time and in my case, I try to bring those onomatopoeia sounds and replace them for the words. And with the movement, it replaces probably a whole a whole sentence. It, it takes rehearsal, so no worries. We'll get there in a second. Um, so all this to say to make your moves and voices and sound effects intention. No matter how much you want to have fun and do all kinds of things, you still have to be very intentional with everything. You cannot, I mean, you could, but it would be a little hard and tricky to add movement to all the verbs in your story. You might never finish. I mean, it's just too much. But you might want to put an emphasis on certain ones so you are intentional, especially on those ones because that's a very um, intense scene or that's a scene that it means a lot to you because it's going to connect precisely what was going to happen next and it's very important that this one specifically gets is imprinted in their brains right so we have to figure it out where is that we're going to put that emphasis of movements and voices and sound effects uh, because we don't need it through through every single um, verb adjective or sentence in the story and by all means it has has to be clear one thing that works for me is whenever I think I have something figured it out, I rehearse it with my husband and he's the one that tells me I didn't get that. Uh, I don't know what you're doing with your hands there uh, or that could be offensive or that's confusing, right? And that's precisely what we're trying to work here is that make things as clear as possible for as many people as possible, not only for you. Because in my head, it could be like, this is amazing. And this totally in my head means this. But then you show it to another person. It just doesn't. And it has happened to me because I come from a different culture. Also, sometimes a different generation. Um, even when I'm telling to older folks or to the young ones, uh, I find myself like, okay, <laughs> there's a gap. Uh, they may not know this. If I was telling to other people that are, 20, 25, 30, 40, they would totally get this, but no, I'm not. So I have to work on movements and sounds and, 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 and gestures that are kind of universal in a way. All right, we can move on, Dean. So expressions, like I said before, uh, we can learn so much about what's going on with a character based on what their body is showing you. What, what is what shows you. So what we're going to do now is the fun part. So I'm, I'm going to stop talking and we're going to move on to doing exercises. So we're going to have a gallery view, or at least I'm going to have a gallery view of all of you, if I can. Um, and we're going to start doing exercises. So Dean, can we um, move to the next slide? Okay, so I'm gonna need everybody to have their mics off. Um, I, I mean, yes, off or on, I'm sorry, on. And I'm gonna try to have as many of you here in my window so I can see your faces. Your beautiful, beautiful faces, gorgeous. I do encourage you to to turn your mics, um, your mics or your, at least your cameras on if you don't wanna have the mic on because I, it is important for me to see your face because what we're gonna be doing here is I'm gonna try to work with what you're giving me and give you a bit, a bit of feedback so we construct together a really powerful gesture that then you can use whenever you want, right? So 
First of all, I want everybody to give me a happy yes. Someone gave you a good, uh, is, pro is proposing something to you and you're like excited, you were been waiting for this. Yeah, okay, I yes. like it. All right, so I see yes. some of you yes. going with hands up, yes. which is, yes, yes. yes. You know, yes. Like, you're like, yes. this is a bomb, you're, you're throwing out, yes, this is amazing, right? I saw some of you doing, yes, yes, this is like, oh yeah, it's like yes. this is a trophy that you just won and your hands are close, it's close to you, but you're still, you're, you're very, very energetic and you're going here. And this is a good one because sometimes when you have a stand mic, you cannot go like this, maybe because you might hit the, the mic. So going with something short as this is actually good for a, an expression of happiness sometimes, right? It depends. If you don't have any problems with the mic, you can totally go like this. But it, sometimes you have to figure it out. What are the limitations of your stage? So this one, and I also saw your faces, your eyes lit up, your eyebrows went high, your, you, you showed me your best smile, most teeth. Yes, right? It was, yes, I saw you all going like that. Beautiful. Now I want you to give me a mad yes. Someone is telling you that you got to do something and you just don't like it, but you still have to say yes. No. <laughs> but it's still a yes. yes. It's a mad yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hey, See, yes. your yes. voice goes yes. really yes. grave, like deep. Yes. And it's short. And also, your body's barely moved. You, most of you went like this, kind of like reclusing yourself, kind of protecting yourself. Like, yes, you don't want to move. You're, you're trying to stand on your position. You're like, pinning yourself so no one else makes you do anything else that you don't want to do so your whole body told me that when you actually didn't go like this or didn't go like this no you were like yes like a post like a like a wall right all right now give me um you're not sure about this but it, you have to say yes like is I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure yes type of yes 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 okay yes. see so you're still a little centered. Your body doesn't want to go expressive and all beyond. No, you're still, but your body's went a little bit like, mm, you're tilting, you're moving, you're conceding a little, but you're in doubt. And when you're in doubt, you kind of go sideways because you're yes, no, yes, no, exactly. You're not sure about it. And your voices, yes. It was a longer yes. It was not yes, an explosive. It was not yes. It was yes. See, those little details matter so much when you're building your characters. All right, let's go with a confused yes, which is kind of similar to the other one. So I'm sorry, let's skip that one. And let's go with the scared yes. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, so yes. immediately your chin went back. Yes, because yes. you you're afraid that something is getting on your face, right? Something mm -hmm. is scaring you. It's coming from yeah, right in front of you. So you went chin back, and your voice went a little high pitch, mm -hmm. but also it kind of scared, and it went like really fragile, like a little girl. Like, yes, <laughs> I heard those voices. Yes, mm -hmm. pretty cool. All right, now give me a happy no. This is a hard one because normally we don't go with happy no's, but this is something that you didn't want it to do. And finally they say, no, you don't have to do it. And you're like, oh, you're so happy that you don't have to do it. So give me a happy no. 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 <laughs> there you go. So your hands again were like, no. Like you're it's kind of an explosion. Yes, you feel free from it. You don't have to do it anymore, right? And it was a no, a victorious no. And I love Sue going back ha, 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 with that laughter, right? Yeah, it's a celebration, right? Good. Now give me a mad no. That's an easy one. No. 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 Oh, I like that. No. no. Oh, very deep. It's like, no, there's no negotiation here. And against your bodies stayed in the same place. Do you see? Your body didn't celebrate it that no. Um, now give me a, com a lying no. You're lying. Like, like. Mm. No. 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 Ah. So you 
your bodies are still staying put because it, it, this is a negative thing, but your voice is is the one saying the the opposite. Like no, 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 <laughs> right? That's a good one. Now give me a scary no. No, no, no. no. There you go. Cool. All right. Now give me a how dare you, but you're flirting with that how dare you. How dare you? <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> All right. I see some of you going like, how dare you? So you see your bodies go forward. How dare you? So there's flirting in your in, in your movement. How dare you? there's a little dance because this is flirting. Cockit when you're being cockadish or flirting, you're going, mm, mm, your body is in the move and it's sensual. So if you go, how dare you? And you're all smiling at the end. Now give me an angry, how dare you? How dare you? How dare, dare you? you? Dare you? Dare you? I could see some of you went like this. Yeah, you know, like like a mom or like, how dare you do that to me, right? <clears throat> right? And the voice went higher, but it's not high pitch because it's not how dare you. It's not how dare you. It went high because you're trying to get something across. Like you could not do that to me. Not again. Okay. All right. So we go with an of course, but it's a short of course, as short as possible. Of course. Of course. Of yes, of course, of course. Of course. Right. Now give me a long, of course. Of course. Of course. It's longer. Of course. Of course. Oh. Yeah. Make it last 10 seconds. Oh. Of course. Of course. Yes. Mm. Play with it. That's the whole thing. Play with it. Play with it. As much as it. Mm -hmm. So even I see Sue's body going. Oh, oh, she's going in slow motion. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I want you to do. Just play with this. Play as much as you can. The only one that can see you here is me. So no worries. All right. Now give me, uh, my food is cold and I don't like it, but this, you're a spoiled brat. Like you're always, you get away with things the way you want and for some reason, things are not happening the way you like it right now. So it has to be like you're you're a very spoiled person at this point. My food is cold. I don't like it. I do not like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like it. Exactly. exactly. I saw some of you going like this, like little girls and little boys do, right? They go like this, mm -hmm, which is great. Um, <laughs> And I saw some of your faces going like when you're a little girl, how dare you, my food is cold, right? And, and your voice also went a little high pitch because it, it's, that's what you would expect a child to do, right? To be spoiled. All right, that was pretty cool. Now let give me, uh, my food is cold, but this time you're outraged. I mean, it, it, you were expecting something amazing. You had all these great ideas and all of a sudden it's just not happening and you are really mad. It's cold. I don't like okay. it. It's cold. Right. I see some of you going with the hand because you're like ready for a fight. Like you're protesting. This is a protest. How dare you? Um, your bodies are also going forward because you want to tell the other person that this is not happening. You want to get in their face and in their heads and all that, right? So it's how dare you, my foot is. You don't say, how dare you, my food is cold. It, it just does, it kind of contradicts the whole thing. So you just go in front because you're outraged. All right, now give me, there is a fly in the moon and you are disgusted. Fly in the room. Fly in the room. All right, great. So I see a lot of your faces go like this. Ugh. Ugh. Great, this is a great sound of disgust. Ooh. And you also, a lot of you complimented with the hand because you're trying to, you know, get it away. And others just did the, the eyes, just follow the fly. Oof, there is a fly in the, uh, in the room. Oof, 
that works too. Mm -hmm. So either you move, you're like a fan in that moment. You're like, ooh, trying to avoid the fly. Ooh, or you're just like, really, um, you know, shushing it away. Perfect. Um, now give me, this is wonderful. I love it, but it is an honest one. This is wonderful. I, I love, love it. it. I just love it. Love it. Love Beautiful. It. I love yes. it. A lot of you went like with your hands like this because it's a sign of expression and even gratitude. And then you go like this. I love this one. I love it because you want to bring it closer. It's something that is dear to you, right? So it's very simple. It's wonderful. I love it. It's wonderful. I love it. See, it's two motions. And then your face says the rest, which is a happy face. I love it. And your voice goes really tender. I love it. You don't say, I love it. I love it. <laughs> no, no. You say, I love it with a tender and sweet voice, right? Now, I want you to say the same thing, but you really don't mean it. Uh, this oh, um, wonderful. I love it. This is wonderful. <laughs> I love it. So your 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 bodies are protecting yourselves. I, you didn't go like this. You didn't go like this. You you're not expressing. You went like you kind of center yourself. A lot of you went like protecting your hand with a hand protecting your mouth. Like this is wonderful. I love it. Mm -hmm. But you're like center. You don't you don't want to express more than that because you're afraid that you if you say more, they're gonna find out that you're actually lying. Okay. All right. So Dean, can we move to the next one? All right. So this is a fun one. What we're gonna do here is that um I'm gonna give you the first one which is uh, we're gonna try to do, what are they saying? What are all of these faces saying? And what I want you to do is you, each of you are gonna guess what is one face saying, right? I'm, and I'm gonna tell you when it's your turn. You're gonna guess that and you're gonna guess, uh, you can try to guess a line, which is kind of what I prefer, but if not, then you can just try to describe a little bit of his feelings at that moment. And then you are going to mimic it and we're going to mimic it with you. And if you set a line, we're going to try to repeat the line with you. So I'm going to give you the example. Row one, number one, he is doing this. And this is kind of like, uh, what's going on? Right? So I want you all to do the same face with me and, do, and say the same thing. Uh, what's going on? Perfect. Great. All right. Sue, so you will be the second row one, number two, phase two. What do you think you're saying? <laughs> that was a funny joke. I like it. Okay, let's all do it. <laughs> that was a that funny, was a funny joke. joke. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We go with Mary Gray's number three, row one. <laughs> I can't think of what she's saying. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just a it's silly like, face. It's alarm, but. Okay. Um, so is row surprised her three at the top? Is, is the very row one, the first row, and is number three. His eyes are like Oh, going. I'm sorry. No, I no, no, you're good. Duh. Perfect. <laughs> okay, let's all do it. Duh. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. And that's a funny character. If you have one of those ones that does that kind of things, duh. And in a lot of Pixar and Disney movies, they always have that character that does funny faces and also says duh like kids love it all right so we go the same row um the face number four and we go with mary jean can you tell us what the face number four on row one is telling us oh that is disgusting <laughs> <laughs> okay let's all do it oh, oh, that is disgusting. Disgusting. perfect <laughs> All right, so Jane, you're gonna go with phase five on row one. 
I didn't expect to see you. I am so happy. <laughs> I like it. Okay, let's let's all do it. I didn't expect to see you. I'm so happy. That's a great face, right? Because yes. it's like, uh, uh. Yeah. and that's a face that you can use it for so many things and you're going to get so many laughs out of the audience. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to skip number six. Uh, we're going to row number two and we're going to do not the, the fourth phase, number four, and is Emily. Emily wrote to uh, the fourth phase. Oh my. <laughs> we can go with oh my. The guy is kind of serious, right? But you yeah. can tell that oh. something in the back of his head is kind of questioning things like, oh my, what am I, what am I doing here? Sort of. So let's all do it. Like serious face, but saying, oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Yeah, good one. All right. So now, Veronica, you're going to go with row two, the last phase. Oh no. Perfect. Let's do it. Oh, oh. That is a great one. So th that happens a lot, right? When you get in trouble with something, oh no. Okay. Oh, great. All right. Now we're going to go with row three. And we're going to do the phase number one. And this one goes for Mikkel. Michael. 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 Wow. Phase number one. Um... Yeah, yeah. Not, he got it. it. It's it's phase number one, row three. She got it right. Yeah, yeah. You good? Could you do it again? Sorry. I knew that Michael answered. That's all. Oh yeah, Michael's answered. Oh, I said yuck. Oh, there's two of us. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yuck. I'm going with uh, Michael Oswald. First. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you go. Oh. Okay. Well, let's all do what it. Surprise. What is up? Oh, beautiful. Okay, let's do it. Wow. What a surprise. Yeah, that's a big, like a big surprise, right? Because you drop your jaw completely. All right. Now we're going with row three, phase. Mm, oh, give me a second. Phase four. And Pat, you are doing row three, mm -hmm. phase four. <laughs> No, no, no. Yeah. No, no. Okay. Great. All right. Let's all do it. Oh, no, no, no. Great. All right. Now, Jay, you're going to go with row four, the first space on row four. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Great. That's a that's a perfect. Did you see that? Right. Let's all do it. Did you, did you see that? Yeah. It, you can't kind of freeze there because your eyes is, get really big. And if you have small eyes like mine, they kind of look funny because I mean it's really hard for me to open and really big. So that's a funny face for that. All right. I doubt anybody can do the second phase. That's a pretty hard one. I don't know. Don't. But let's do um David. You're the next one. So it will be row four, phase four. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. Okay. <laughs> let's all do it. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Great. 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 Awesome. Now Venora. You're next, and you're going to be doing row five, and you're doing the first phase on row five. Almost like that, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's yes. nice one. Exactly. All right, let's all do it. Um, oh, it's like that. Oh, it? Always <laughs> like that. Yeah. Great. All right, we're going with... Um, Ron, you're going to be doing 
Row five, the third phase. You have to unmute yourself. I just came on a while, but trying to figure out what's going on. We're just having fun, Ron. So I'm giving each one a phase. So the idea is that you repeat the same phase that I'm, I'm giving you and then try to come up with a line that that is goes with that phase. What what would that character be saying when he or she is doing that phase? So um, for instance, I'm gonna give you an example, the, the one I did at, at the beginning, row one, the first phase, his face is like, like this, right? Like, ugh. so it's more like, uh, I don't know what's happening, right? And so then we all repeat what you came up with. So the phase that I'm giving you is on row five, the last row, it would be the third phase. So what I do you think that phase is saying? Am I supposed to be able to see that? Can you see her? No. Huh. Could it be that? Oh. I see. Some of the other folks, but I don't, and you. Oh, you don't have the sheet of paper with the road, a lot of pa faces. No, I don't have this, no. Okay, well then you can't do it. No wonder you don't know what's going on. <laughs> yes, uh, actually, uh, I looks like I hit something too. And I, at this point, I can only all see your faces too. Um, so, huh. I'm learning to use Mac. Beautiful. Okay, I see face. I see the, the I see. Okay. So hmm. I don't know what I did either. Well, I'll make the face for him and he can do it from us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. how about um who's who was next? You were with Juan, so now it'd be Marianne or Michael on my computer. Okay, um, I'm actually, I, Dean, did you stop presenting? Mm -mm. It's still on. It's still on? I can only see my... No, it's not. Okay, could you like share it again? Give me just a minute. Yeah. But... I, just so you know, you guys are doing great. And the whole the idea with doing this is just have fun. That's what I do all the time. Um, it's just have fun, be being silly and try to explore how how many gestures can I can come up with my face. Um, okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Ah, oh, great, great. All right. So, Ron, can you see it now? I can't see nothing at all. Everything's. Hmm. Awesome. I think maybe you are on a view like where it's like only us maybe um I wish I could but in the meantime just follow what we're doing sounds good yeah I lost I lost your everybody I just hear your voice no video oh. um. all right well let let's hope Ron gets back on track in a second. Karen, would you do the row five, the third phase? Oh, it's like that, is it? Okay. Like that. It's like that. It's like that. It's like that. All right. Now let's do the last row, last phase. Um. Jay McLaughlin, are you there? Yeah, yeah. I'm just blacked out because my screen was getting crazy. All right. Last row, last space. I can't believe you said that out loud. <laughs> okay, let's do it. I guess. I can't believe you said that out loud. Out loud. <laughs> So. Yeah, that is a phase that kind of like uh, whatever you're saying, it, it feels like is you're saying it in your head, 
right? It's not like a face that expresses right. that one said right. it out loud, but that is kind of like what's going on in someone's head. So it's perfect because you can do the face first and stop right there for a second and then tell what the character is thinking. And then oh. it makes it a good connection. Yeah. All right, Dean, can we move on to the next uh, slide? All right. So I want everybody to, um, we're going to do this again, but this time we're doing it uh, with a little bit more of mo emotions and, and, and movement. So I want everybody to whisper a yes. And I want to see how, how many different ways you can whisper a yes. 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 So I saw some of you going like this. Is so you can tell this is a very secretive yes. Yes. Right. Uh, others just went like yes. So it can it, it sounds a little cockettish, like mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it depends, right? It depends on how you're doing it. Um, this is a yes. And let, let, let's not anybody find out what's going on here. Yes. And then let's move on. Right. Mm -hmm. And and the other one is like, yes. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want you to give me a yes that, but you're going to drag it as much as you can. Drag that yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> so I see your face is going like yeah or maybe yeah so your body the whole body is dragging it to those yeses that are when you drag it they are so funny for the audiences too when you experiment with how you use you use it so yes yes and your body goes with it now i want you to dance the yes dance yeah. it a yes everybody does it come on ron you can dance it too there you go there you go mm -hmm. yes you're dancing kids love this ones when you you have a character is dancing a yes 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 Mm. And then you'll see the kids dancing it with you. It's just those little things add up to the stories. Now I want you to do a yes, but in slow motion, which is not the same as dragging it necessarily. It's slow motion. So your, your lips, your tongue, your body is moving in slow motion. Go ahead. Yes. I see some of uh, Sue is like an expert. <laughs> 15 seconds, that's perfect. But yeah, it, it goes, you have to kind of savior each letter in your mouth. See how you can stretch it as much as you can. And when you're doing it with the kids, I mean, they love it. They have a hard time at first because kids can go on slow motion, right? But the more they try it, the more they start getting into it and it, it's, it feels fun. All right. Um, let's go with a no and you're stuttering this no. 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 Perfect. Yes, yes. Now I want to, this is a no that is used for shushing. So let's see how. Good, good. So I see some of you using just your heads. No. And you're shushing with your head because you're like passing the page, like, like, right? Or most of you did this. Good, good. Now we're going to drag that no. See how you can drag it. No. Let's be creative. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. 
Mm. That's a very long no, right? But sometimes we talk like that. Sometimes we drag our nose. We say no, 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 not while I'm alive, right? So that's a very funny no, right? It's a very funny no, and you can just have fun with that little no. That's it. Now I want you to sing that no because. Someone proposed you something you don't like, and you are happy to say no to that. So sing it. No, 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 now we're learning more and more for instance that we are we are allowed to say no to things and it is okay we don't need to feel guilty so that's something that we can teach our kids but with a, something fun right and so that's that no when you're saying no to something that really doesn't suit you and it's okay so have fun and i love the way you did it guys so that was fun all right so i want you to give me a how dare you but you have to split it up like word by word Oh, Marianne, I like that one. <laughs> how dare you? So you see, Marianne went like, she went diagonal, but she also went with her finger and she went, how dare you? That is such a fun one for a character to have, you know? It, it has some rhythm, but also it carries the whole message of like, hey, don't mess with me. Why are you doing this, right? Good, good. Um, now sing that, how dare you? How oh, dare you, how dare you, how dare you, how dare you, how dare you? How, 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 how dare you? How dare you? How, 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 how dare you? You can just you know, be silly, as silly as you can. I have a coyote in one of the stories and he, he goes down the prairie singing. He's a really bad singer like me, but kids don't care. And kids love a funny voice and I'm, I'm, I can make it. So I, he goes like, um, how happy? How happy I am, how happy, how happy I am. And that's all. And the kids just have fun with that. So it's the same thing here. Just have fun with it, right? Now, I want you to say, how dare you with a bubble in your mouth? Oh, you were in the no, process of no, eating your potatoes. No, no. It got you with a mouthful. No, no. Perfect. I love it, Ron. Great. Great. Well, it's not like, like a certain actor who used to stutter. <laughs> All right, let's go with an of course, but this is a gossiping, of course. I know we don't like gossiping, but in we have characters that gossip. So this is not you portraying you, it's you portraying a character that is gossiping and saying, of course. 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 Yes. So there's different ones here. Some of you went like, came closer because this is something secretive between you and me, of course. Others went like this, of course, of course or just of course, right? Yeah, there are different ways to say it. So you just have to figure out which one works much better, right? But if you're like in the audience, I would say probably this one not necessarily is the best one because you're blocking your mouth, right? Uh, so, and, and I really want to see your mouths and the kids are wanna see that. So it's, I normally use, maybe you can just do this, right? Just put your hand like this, Perfect. All right. Now give me an of course, like a politician. You know, they're big liars, right? 
and they have a big smile on their faces at the end of every sentence. So give me an, of course, like a politician. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Uh, I can see Emily, Karen, and Ron doing campaigns. Oh, of <laughs> That's perfect. Great, great. Awesome. Now, I want you to do uh, my food is cold, but you're going to bring it from your nose. Nasal. My food is cold. My food is cold. Oh. My phone is cold. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm talking from my phone. Oh. 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 My phone is cold. Yes. Yes. yes, yeah. Nasal voices are very fun to do too. For certain characters and animals, they work really fun. So keep it in mind. Now give me a frog is complaining that his food is cold. Can I see the flies around the frog, maybe? Yes. Great. Yes. That's fun. All right. Now, this one is a tough one again, but we will have those characters sometimes. This is a drunk. And he's saying, my food is cold. Oh, my food. My food is cold. Is cold. Oh, oh, oh. Old. Oh, old. Oh, old. Oh, old. Perfect. So a lot of you, when like a, like a typical drunk, you're dizzy, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're balancing back and forth, back and forth, which is perfect. And uh, at least I, I think I saw one person like, uh, clearing the saliva out of his face. <laughs> that was funny. So that's perfect. Yeah, just have fun with it. Okay. Um, so I want you to use a high pitch and say, there is a fly in the moon. High pitch. There is a fly. There is a fly. There is a fly. <laughs> yes. Uh, you see, high pitch totally sounds like a little girl. Uh, even Ron was, I could hear you a little bit there. And it sounds high pitch always typical sounds like a little girl, or it sounds maybe like a fairy or like a small little person, right? So that's a perfect voice for um, small characters, high pitch. But it's also hard to maintain sometimes. So when you do those, just give them short lines. So don't make them, don't give them long dialogues because you'll get exhausted doing those voices. <laughs> but it's fun to hear it, right? All right. So um, we're going to have a, there is a fly in the moon, like a prayer. You're praying and part of the mm -hmm. prayer is saying there is a fly in the moon. There, there is a fly, fly in the moon. There's a fly in the moon. There's a fly in the moon. It's a fly. So your voices went very kind of low, not totally great voices, but when low is is a monotone um, and it's respectful. So some of you went like this, some of you went like this, and some also went like this. Because we, when we pray, sometimes we go back and forth, right? So the movement was perfect. And a lot of times when we're praying, it sounds like a monotone. So, so there's a fly in the moon, 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 there's a fly in the moon. That's it. It's so easy. And it just, this is based on just watching others praying. Have you, I mean, it just, in my case, I, I was raised Catholic. So you you would have all these ladies praying um, the rosary and they would go. <laughs> have you seen Jewish uh, also prayers or Muslims? They also go like. <laughs> and so it just goes. <laughs> so it, you can insert it right there. There's a blind one. There's a blind one. There's a blind one. There's a blind one. It works. All right. Um, all right, um, Dean, can we go to the next one? 
Uh, this is one of my favorite ones. So onomatopoeia sounds. Here's the funny thing if you didn't know, but wherever you go in the world, onomatopoeia sounds will sound different. In most of Latin America, the rooster sounds did, did you know that? It yes. was a shock for me when I heard kukurudu or the other one, the English version of the rooster. And I was like, -do -do -do. yeah, cock -do -do -do. I was like, what is going on with that rooster? That's not how they do it in my country. Mm -mm. They say, Ki -ki -ki -ki. Um, and Antonio Hosha agrees with me. So yeah, I'm not crazy. So this is just to say that uh, we as humans, we, we hear differently. And our cultures also help us to uh, design and, and mold and give a form to the way we hear the world. So here are some funny ones. We're not going to go through them. We're just going to do the exercises. But um, the exercises are, we're going to do a slap, a quick slap. But what, this is onomatopoeia sound. So yes, I want to see your movement, but most of all, I want to hear the sound, the slap sound, okay? So go ahead, it's a slap, a quick slap. Blap. Blap. I want you to do it with your voice. Oh. Slap. 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 All right, now add the movement and the voice. Oh. Yeah. So when you're doing it, the onomatopoeia, you don't have to say the whole word. What I do is slap, I I, I drop the P and I do it. slap, slap, slap. Yeah, slap. <laughs> exactly. And so it sounds more like a sound than the word. Yeah. Now let's do an angry slap with movement and all. <clears throat> there, there. Yes. So when you did the angry one, I could see the anger in your faces. Some of you were like, ah, at first, like for two seconds, and then it went the slap, and you could hear, you could see the energy in your bodies going, bah, hitting that stuff. Okay, great. Now give me a shush. But it's a cockatishly shush. And just just uh, your voices first. <laughs> oh, shush. Ah, I see those eyes going up. Mm, I like it. Oh, I see I see some oh. eyebrows and, and eyelashes moving fast with the shush. Oh, oh Ron, I like it. Mm. <laughs> yes. That's great. Oh, Pat. Pat is very cockatish. She used the fingers. See, there's so many ways to make that little tiny gesture into some something really funny. So, all right, that was great. Now give me a serious shush, but I want to hear the voice first. And now use your body. Okay. Great. Yes. Great. So you hear that the shush, the cockety shush is more like it takes longer to, to, to deliver. Shush. Where the serious shush is shush. You know, it's very short. Shush. And it's like a slap, like, or yeah, like a slap or like a whip. Psh, psh. Yeah, very serious, short. All right. Now, give me an exhausted raspberry. Raspberry with your lips, right? You're exhausted. <laughs> Oh. Oh, I can't remember this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of you went like, right? But your bodies also went down. Because that's what, that's what it means when you're tired, when you're exhausted, your body drops. So you have to use it in that moment. The character is tired. So show it, show it to me with, with your body. Instead of saying, and he was exhausted and tired, you could say, and he was. And he. And he. Yeah. And if you want the people to interact with you, you can ask immediately, what do you think? And the kids immediately get it. Everybody, he was tired, he was exhausted. So that's a pretty perfect moment for participation there. Even if you didn't have anything 
participation wise planned. Um, sometimes we have stories that don't have none, don't necessarily have that interaction and we're good with that. But then you can ask them to, you know, come in and, and interpret those movements with you. All right. Um, at, show me an exasperated uh, raspberry. <sighs> You're tired of that. You're tired of waiting for that Uber for 20 <laughs> minutes. See, it's completely different from the first one. The first one, you dropped your whole body. <laughs> this one, you didn't. You're just dropping mostly your head. Yeah, because you're not, you're just tired of waiting, but your body is not necessarily tired of the whole thing. All right, uh, let's move on with a growl. This is a funny one. Did you ever watch um, The Simpsons? Anyone? Mm -hmm. Well, Marge used to do a growl. Um, it's a human growl. So let's see if you remember it. Anybody can give me a human growl? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so, Marge in The Simpsons, she would always do when she get mad when... Um, whoever was what did something crazy he would always she would always do <laughs> pretty easy pretty easy now give me a dog a dog's growl <laughs> i can see your your lips taking a specific type of like Movement. Some of you are actually showing me teeth. So that's a very different from a human growl, right? Human growl, you don't show your teeth because we don't need to do that anymore. Maybe when we were cavemen, maybe. But these days we don't have to do it, right? We just, you can just do. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's do a pop. I know this is a tough one, but it's doable. Can you pop? <laughs> so when the whole door <laughs> Ron, yeah, that's a good one. Let's see if we can do it faster. That's a very cool sound to do with kids too or when you're like just saying and things just popped up and things just so you can add also we can add the hand too or is there another way to pop with your body like show the popping i think ron was showing me something yeah you can do it in your people's faces right exactly all right, let's do a passionate kiss. Everybody, <laughs> down first. <sighs> I'll show you mine. <laughs> That's a passionate kiss. That's it. And it, it just makes people laugh. That's it. Right? Because they're not expecting such a long, prolonged kiss. And that's it. Um, let's do a in a hurry kiss, which is, I think, kind of like the one you showed me before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're like almost dropping it in the air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, give me a ah, uh, as in like you just understood something in your life, like wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Ah, ah, ah! I see Emily going like this, like she totally understood the thing. Ah, Marianne is like, hmm, hmm, yeah, ah, hmm, and she stays like this seriously because she's thinking about it still thinking about it good all right now give me an ah as in you just remember something you've been trying to remember that thing you couldn't and you finally did there you go See, it's a very different ah. the mouth open wider ah 
Mary Grace went with the finger up because it's like a light bulb, light bulb, right? Ah, ah, and you finally found it here in the air because you're remembering. When we remember, we remember what's up here. You barely, you never say when you remember, oh, I remember what's, no, you <laughs> never go down. You remember up. So it's, ah, so that's why your faces and your mouths went higher. Let's see. All right. Um, let's, let's finish around here with, um, give me a sarcastic wow. 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 Yeah, wow. 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 Oh, wow. 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 Yeah, exactly. Wow. Your eyes kind of roll too, because it's wow. like whatever. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. And then you finish it with some lips going a little tight, like wow. Mm -hmm. oh. Wow. Yeah. Oh, Mary Grace. There she goes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Exactly. Oh, wow. Perfect. All right. Um, Dean, can we go to the next one? I'm, I'm assuming we're all going until two, right? Because we started at 12. So I started at 11. I'm like... sorry. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an hour ahead of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or, or just before two. All right. Well, my yeah, two, you're one. One, <laughs> yeah, just before one. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, sorry. When I mean two is because I'm an, an hour ahead of all of you. So it, it, in my, my clock says is 105 here, so. Yours is 12.05. Okay. I know, I'm old. I I don't read clocks anymore. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have an apple. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do a little bit of movement. Um, and then we're going to go into working on characters. Um, but I want you to explore a little bit more of this until you feel more comfortable with it. So we're going to do the, the uh, explore the touch sense. And I want you to show me how you're touching a hot stove. It's really hot and you didn't know it was hot. Okay. And what happens next? Mm -hmm. Emily, what happens next? Okay, Mary Grace is showing me what happened next. Um, Vanora is showing me too. So yeah, David is like blowing through the fingers. <laughs> Mary Grace even licked them a little bit like because it's your natural instinct. You wanna cool them, right? So there's several ways to cool them. You can either put it in your mouth to cool them a little bit, you can blow them, or you can try to find, you know, put it in the in water, right? So exactly, exactly. All right, so now show me that you're touching velvet. I don't know where the velvet is. I don't know if it's your dress, if it's a handkerchief, it's your hair. I don't know where the velvet is. Just show me that you're touching velvet. So, yeah, I see, for instance, <laughs> Sue is, is, is like a baby touching velvet, you know, and she's like, ah, oh, like, <clears throat> like a pacifier. <clears throat> Some of you were touching it in your clothes, <clears throat> right? And I could see your faces going with so much pleasure. I was like, oh, this is so nice. Hmm. And this is a precious gesture, just going like this. Because there could be a princess in your story whose garment was made of velvet. So you want to show that to the audience. And it was, oh, oh, it was, oh, so soft, right? And then you start seeing people also, you know, smiling because they've touched velvet before. Mm -hmm. So they're connecting with you in that moment just through that moment that where you you transmitted, you shared that, that happiness of that pleasure, which is touching velvet. All right, let's go with you're touching a snake. Mm. I don't know if you like snakes or not, but go ahead and touch it. No, 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 no. All right, some of you were like, mm -mm, I'm not doing that. No, 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 no. Others were like, daring and they were like okay i'm gonna touch it but it's like oh that's emily emily right now is like oh not sure if i like this oh and sue went all beyond i mean she had the snake around her she's like unwrapping the snake 
<laughs> so she can touch it and hug her and all that, right? So there's so many ways to touch the snake. We just realized that some of you are afraid of snakes. Others are like a little afraid, but still daring to do it. And other ones are just not afraid at all. So you see, there are many ways to touch the snake. That's all I'm trying to say. So you have to figure it out in your story uh, what your character is actually, in which position is he or she? Is he the daring one or is he the one that's scared? Or maybe you could have a conflict, like maybe the your character is a daring one and he's daring to touch that snake no matter what. But you, as Van Vanora or as Emily or as Carolina, we're very scared and we're like, oh, no, no. so you could have that little conflict there a little dialogue between the narrator and, and the character. And it, it wouldn't be funny. Like if I, if it, if it were me, I would, uh, uh, but he, he, the character in our story, who is the hero? Well, he went all like this, blah, blah, blah. but me. And, and it is a moment when you connect with the audience because we all have different versions of how we relate with animals, especially snakes, right? All right. Now show me, you're tasting a sour lemon. Let's see who likes lemons and who is like not so much into lemons. Mm. So most of you uh, are like Ron. Mm. You are when like it's like squirmishing in your body. It's like you almost have ants around you because your your whole bodies go like mm, right. Uh, in my case, I love lemons, so I would be like. Mm, mm. <laughs> oh, I love it because I like that. I, I like spicy and I like the sour. And then, so at first it's the same face you did, but then I'm like, oh yes, give me more. <laughs> right. Um, all right. So let's go with your favorite candy. Mm. 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 Hold it there. Yes. Mm. Some are eating it too fast and some are like really taking their time. Mm. But it's true, sometimes you have a favorite candy and you pop it in, you, you have it and then you forgot that it was your favorite candy. You just had it too fast. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's great, that's great. All right, now we go with broccoli. Let's see who likes broccoli and who doesn't. Mm. Mm. So good. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, most of you seem like you're okay with broccoli not your favorite thing but not the most disgusting either right but if you ask a kid likely it's gonna be <laughs> <laughs> so that would be a broccoli for a kid broccoli <laughs> so that's probably what you want to experience at that moment when the character is having broccoli is like <laughs> exaggerated Kids don't like broccoli most of the time. I hated it until I finally learned how to cook it right. Okay. Now show me, uh, let's see who can whistle. It doesn't matter if you can or cannot, just show me how would you try to do it. Okay. Whistles are super cool. Like you don't have to be an expert, and like, you can just say, and there were birds, and then you can go. <laughs> Some of you already do it. So you don't have to be an expert in whistling and you can still bring it and do that sound for the birds. So that's pretty easy, yeah. I mean, of course there's people that are experts in it, but you don't have to. And, and you can wall the kids and the audience with just a tiny five seconds of a nice bird whistling, that's it. Um, oh, this is a fun one. You're opening an old door. So I want to see the movement, but I also want to hear how that old door sounds. Good, good. Is that sounding a little bit like a frog here and there, but uh, you were for the most part good at my door. I don't open doors like this because uh, a lot of times it's just not very accurate and it, it looks a little clumsy. So the way I open a door is like this. And it's a very uh, simple and effective um, 
Jack's gesture. Exactly. For instance, I had a friend, also a storyteller, in in he once complained that sometimes when people are telling a story about like shooting something, like maybe a revolver, they pull out the rifle or revolver, that people don't know how to shoot or they don't know how to use the arrows. Um, and, and that experts or those who have done it would immediately see that that person is like not doing it accurately. And so for those matters, because I don't shoot, I don't hunt, um, what I try to do is to minimize the gesture. So I'm not offending anybody if I'm like not opening the door correctly or, or not using the rifle correctly or the arrows, right? So I go for shorter moves um, that imply what, it's, what, is, uh, what is happening, but I don't need to be a perfectionist about it, right? We're not in theater here. So I don't need to just totally do the whole thing and no, I mean, just in this case, just so go for something as simple as possible, but it's clear too. And that's it. And let the sound tell the rest of the story. All right. Um, <clears throat> a car is coming towards you. It's coming from afar, but it's, it keeps coming, it keeps coming. It, it's like that car is not seeing you. So I want your face, I want to see your face, how you react to a car that keeps approaching. It's really far first, but it keeps approaching, approaching, and it just looks like it's going to hit you because it hasn't seen you. This is kind of a slow motion. Yeah. There it goes. I can see Ron. Ron went really slow motion. So he, he went kind of close here and his, his face is slowly starts changing. Like, like, is that car coming? Really? Hmm. Is it? <laughs> and then he starts going back slowly. You, most of you also went back, but you have to watch the face because the first part of the face is, is that car really driving fast? Wait, yeah. And it's kind of like coming towards me, right? Oh my gosh, hasn't he seen me? Hey, I'm here. Oh no, 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 he's clearing us. See, you see the progression of how you're like, you, you go from doubt to re being really scared. It only takes five seconds max, right? All right, um, let's do the easy one, a giant. You're seeing a giant. Where do you go? <laughs> yep, yeah, most of you go up. Exactly, that's what it means to see a giant. And I think Sue's giants is like gigantic because she was like, she jaw, dropped the jaw, like something else going on with a giant. And she's like, what? Good, good. Now, so you're seeing an ant. Where does your face go? You go down, exactly. Yes, some of you really went down because it's like really tiny. Like really tiny, really tiny. Good, good. And Sue even brought it here. Although she, it looks like she's not scared of being beaten by the ant. Good, <laughs> good. So you could tell she loves nature. All right. Um, freshly baked bread. <laughs> your grandma baked it or you just baked it the way your grandma did with the old recipe and it's, ah, mm, there you go. <clears throat> For those of you who tell personal stories, uh, I noticed that, um, <clears throat> I, I can't remember who was in, in, on stage and she did that. She was talking about her mother baking and she inherited the recipe. <clears throat> I'm sorry. And then, um, she made it and, and it was this moment, it was gorgeous. And you could see how she stopped to make that gesture perfect. It's like, and she took her time to do that, to smell it. And we could all smell it with her at that point. And she wasn't even talking. She was just smelling it. And, and, and it, it brought us all back to our childhood because our mothers cooked something for us, baked something, cookies or bread, like whatever it was, right? But that moment where that woman stopped to 
talk about that that bread smelling and she opening the oven and ah everybody in that audience was like the same like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like amen amen it was like that moment and it was just that gesture of smelling it that got us to smell it with her and it brought us in that intimacy so it was just that little thing it was gorgeous so um i believe in gestures because of that too <coughs> oh hey someone else does too Sadie. Sadie. Okay, so a skunk. You just smell a skunk. Uh-huh. David immediately is like, Wah, rah. But I see your faces like, Ugh. So you see, that's a funny face. It's a face that your chin goes back, which is a very funny when you do this, because you get a double chin. And then you show your teeth in disgust. Ugh. And you would get so many laughs out of the audience just by doing Ugh. and it smelled like skunk but it was just my husband baking I don't know <laughs> you get a good joke out of it but it was because first you put the face the funny face and then you delivered the joke anyway um let's move on oh okay I want to see a perfume I really don't know if you like the perfume or not so show me whatever comes to your mind with your smelling perfume. So some of you clearly have the perfume here, right? Good. So I can tell that the perfume is on you, not on someone else, right? But others, when Jane went like this, send me that perfume here. Mm-hmm. So maybe Jane, what I can gather from that gesture is that maybe she splashed it in the air and now she's trying to, you know, splash oh, it on herself. Cause you know, that's what, how you're supposed to do the perfumes. You splash it in the air and then you just mm. like walk and, and it just falls on you, right? right? So I could gather that from just you doing this, right? I, I got it from Mary Grace that it was in, the perfume was on her. Mm -hmm. um, and some of you were like, the perfume is in the air. Like someone has it, someone else, but it's not me, right? You know, so you go, mm. right? So, all right, uh, Dean, can we move to the next slide? All right, so let's talk characters. Um, I suggest that you define them with one or two gestures um, at first. So you don't need to go into detailing every character like, he has blue eyes, he is tall, he is handsome, he is blah, 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 right? Um, because a lot of times you don't even get to say any of that in the story. It, you just have so much space to actually tell your audience how that um, uh, character looks like or feels or acts. So what I try to do is to define it with one or two gestures and that's as good as it gets. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. My giraffe, I have a giraffe and in, in one of the children's stories and she goes like this. So a giraffe is tall. That's my first characteristic. She's tall, right? And she also so munches on, on leaves, right? So my, my giraffe is like this. That's all. And in between I deliver the line which is like, oh, oh, how inconvenient. <laughs> and it's two gestures, which is going tall and high. And the other one is the munching. And the voice came after, after the gestures, because the gestures is what began giving me uh, who was that character. Um, all right. Uh, another one, the belly button monster. It's not my story, but I adapted it. And my belly button monster, he talks with his hands like this. And I took a lot of time to develop that character, but he talks like this. Give me such a pride. You don't have to be so rude. You could just ask not slay. So he is very expressive and his hands always go here or here. And his voice is 
uh, he opens his mouth a lot. So those were the two things that I had clear about that character. He was going to move his hands a lot like this. And he was going to open his mouth a lot. <laughs> and the rest of the gestures came with, with the mouth. So, oh, no. It went like this. And, and the rest of the character just like, just came with, uh, with those uh, two initial gestures. Um, I have the lords of Shibalba in a story. And so these are um, underground um, lords. It's, they're the deities that are like in the underworld. And so they talk like this. Who, who dares to play our game? So that I base my 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 whole character on him being underground. So he's underground. It means that he has he has to go down, and then he's underground. He's talking about something that happens up. So he will always be looking up. Who, who? And the voice came with that right after because it's a voice that it has to be a little menacing, um, a little intriguing, mysterious. And so it just. The gestures came first before the voice. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, all right. So I would say pay attention how the character moves. Um, let's say you're talking about anim you have animals in the story. So how pay attention, watch a video of five minutes, two minutes, how an elephant moves, how a hippo moves, how the giraffe does. All those little things do matter because you can grab little cues on that. Sometimes we think that an animal moves one way and then you go watch it on the zoo at the zoo or on a video and in reality, they don't move like that that much. It's just for some reason we assumed that it was like that. So it's very helpful to watch those videos and I try to do it as much as I can when I'm trying to come up with an idea for a character. Um, same thing with a family member. Let's say you're portraying, you're doing a personal tale, right? Uh, and you're talking about your mom, your dad, your brother, sister, your husband, your dog, pay attention how they move. When you're talking to them, be intentional. Don't only just listen to what they're saying with their words, but listen to the how their hands move, how they talk. Do they talk with both hands? Do they talk with the finger all the time? Uh, do we talk more with the right hand? Do we talk like this? Everybody talks differently. Everybody uses their hands differently. And then you start paying attention to how they use their gestures on their face. And we do use them differently. Their gestures are so unique that when I see them, I'm, I, I'm like this. I can't stop looking at that person until I, I, I absorb it. And then I, my husband sees, tells me normally like, you just learned a new one. And I'm like, yes. And he talks like this a little, or he does this. And, and I'm trying to get it because I think it's so cool. So I try to mimic and mimic until I get it. And it just goes back in my brain. And it comes, it, it comes, um, when it, it comes to the front, um, to, to my, to the front lobe, or I don't know how do you call this, but, uh, it, it comes, um, use, uh, useful when it's needed. Mm -hmm. So maybe in a week, I won't remember it, but maybe since I already registered in my brain, mm -hmm. what happens is that when a character that I am, I'm trying to work on comes and I'm like, I make a click, my brain makes the click. Oh, that gesture, boom, boom, boom. And it just brings it and, and it just happens. So I'm constantly trying to pay intentional attention to how people talk. So I listen to your words, but I'm also listening to your mouth, how it moves. I'm listening to your hands because I know everybody moves differently. And it's amazing, amazing the gestures you can you know, absorb from people. Um, all right. I would say you're probably already seasoned about this. You, I probably don't need to tell it to you, but there is a chance that sometimes we want to, we are ambitious and we want all our characters in the story to play a role. And, and, and so 
We want the, the elephant, that cockroach, the mouse and everybody, like all 10 characters in a story to have a line and it's impossible. It could be co highly confusing. So I would always say, choose two, max three, and let the narrator deliver the other characters with descriptions. And then you just focus your energy on those two or three because then they will shine and people will remember them more than if you just try to do a 10 characters in one story, right? Um, always try to work on a voice that defines the character, defines the personality of the character. And I don't go too far into analyzing psychologically the character. <laughs> I just go with, he is mischievous. <laughs> he is, um, I don't know, he is shy. He is, um, he's a go-getter. You know, just one or two adjectives and that's as good as it gets with me. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you might get too confused. I mean, and you only have five to 10 minutes. <laughs> like you have to do a thesis on it. Mm -hmm. um, Avoid voices that hurts you. Uh, there are voices that are bad, 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 bad. Like, talking like this will be really bad for you. Because at the end, you don't have a voice. <laughs> um, so even if you think that it's a cool voice and that's how the lion talks, you might want to look for another lion voice. Mm -hmm. Do not hurt yourself. It's not worth it. Um, and use short dialogues. I try to minimize, minimize dialogues as much as I can, just like one, two sentences and no more, no more, no more. Because also we're in a different era and kids don't concentrate in too much speech because if they don't have a screen bouncing around, changing things and sound effects and all kinds of effects, um, they'll get distracted. So long dialogues will not work with them that often. All right. Dean, can we move to the next one? All right. So my last tips is experiment with your voice. Uh, one that works with me is doing my dog's voice. So let's say you're not that comfortable you doing voices sometimes because, I mean, it could be silly. Um, but I do my dog's voice. And that's kind of one of the things that helped me a lot to get um, to lose the fright of using different voices. So I start speaking for my dog and he talks like this, mommy, mommy, I want my food. Mommy, 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 I want my food. <laughs> and so, and I do it all day. He looks at me and, and I immediately respond. I say, what, what do you need, Porter? Mommy, you know what I want. Uh. <laughs> so uh, it just, Doing having that relationship and doing it at home, it helped me so much to develop other voices later. So if you have a cat or a fish um, or maybe a tree or something that you like feel connected to, it could even be um, a pot, a plant, or something. But try to find see how you can have a dialogue with that other one, and then you start exploring. It just clicks. It starts clicking eventually. Um, Play with intonation and pace. Like I said before, pace is something that we don't explore too often because we normally, the character speaks at the same pace that the narrator talks sometimes. But maybe if the character starts talking a little slowly, perhaps feeling every letter in his mouth, then you get an entirely different voice. Yeah, that's as simple as that. Just like that little trick, that's it. Uh, and play, be playful and have fun. So I was thinking we can use the rest of the time with more exercises. Okay, Dean, can we go to the next one? All right, so this is gonna be a fun one. And I'm going to um, assign um, your character and your line. So Mary Grace, since you're the first one next to me in my little screen, you're going to be a giraffe that is a very mysterious giraffe. And you will be saying, there is something strange going on. Remember, you are a mysterious giraffe. There's something strange 
going on. Perfect. Did you see, she took her time. She came forward because she's a giraffe and she's tall. She positioned herself, neck tall, and then she started going around first. She took her time exploring because that's the sense of mysteriousness. I mean, when there's something mysterious around, you start looking around, right? That's exactly, that's exactly what you do. And then she delivered her lines slowly, looking a little bit more suspicious of the event unfolding, right? And I could feel that air of mysteriousness, or mysteriousness around her, something dark. I could feel it just by her body, first positioning, the movement, and then the voice. Thank you, Mary Grace. All right. Mary Jean, you are the next one to Mary Grace's in my little view. So you're going to be a hippo and you are a very coquettish hippo and you are saying, I like what I see. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey, ooh. All right, so Mary Jean is a little shy, but still I could see her Her hippo was a low hippo because hippos are, you know, they're not tall, they're kind of short technically. And then she went around because she was exploring, which is part of being cockatish too. You explore a little, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then she was, ooh. Good, thank you. All right, Jane, you're a cat and you're a very serious cat. And you're saying meow and you say, I don't know what the big deal is, meow. Meow, I don't know what the big deal is, me. meow. <laughs> so you see, I could see that it's a little kind of a Garfield type of cat, I felt, <laughs> right? Um, Cats, them, they tend to stay still a lot of times. So she stayed still. She stayed on a corner like this and she went, meow. I don't know what the big thing. Meow. So I felt like it was a cat, right? All right. Now we're going to Emily. This is a challenging one. You're a worm, a little tiny worm, and you're angry and you're saying to someone, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? Yeah. So you see her eyebrows went down and her voice also went a little like, mm, what are you looking at? I would have gone a little bit more high pitch because you're a warm and you're tiny. So I would have gone like, what are you looking at? Mm. Yeah. Great. All right. But Nora, we're going with a snake. You're a confused snake. You're very confused and you're saying yes, to bite or not to bite. Yes. That is the question. <laughs> to bite or not to bite. is the question oh boy i got i got i got chills with that one that's great you see her voice was the delivery of her voice was exactly kind of like mysterious because you don't know if she's gonna bite you or not and she's um she's confused but at the same time she seems kind of inclined to bite you so she's doubting if she should or not but that was perfect great thank you all right, we're going with a mouse, a sneaky mouse, Ron. And you're saying it's not what you think. You're a sneaky mouse and, and, and you you just got caught doing something like a sneaky mouse. And you're saying it's not what you think. <clears throat> not what you think. Oh, that's the cutest mouse. <laughs> <clears throat> so, but... I, I would add to the mouse the, the sneaky part. So maybe I would go like 
not what you think, <laughs> right? You got to add the sneaky part first mm -hmm. because we saw the mouse, but we didn't see the sneaky part until we heard your voice, right? Your voice did say, <laughs> did say that like, you know, I'm being sneaky here, but, but maybe give us a little bit of the action at first, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, let's go with a gossipy flamingo and David you are a gossipy flamingo and you are saying oh this is a juicy one you're just about to hear a really good gossip and you're a flamingo oh, this is a juicy one so you see he went up because flamingos have long necks too so he felt like he needed to go up like a flamingo and then he moved like a dance Ooh, this is a juicy one, right? Yeah, because when you're gossiping, a lot of times you're kind of dancing, like you go, <laughs> and you move a lot, gigglish and all that. So that was great. You go, ooh, this is a juicy one. All right. Now we go with a skeptical dog, and that would be Karen. You're a skeptical dog, and you are saying, should I trust this human? He doesn't smell good. <laughs> Did I trust this human? He doesn't smell good. So that was great. So this I can see the skeptical, but mm -hmm. I would like to see a little bit of like he's obviously he's smelling the human. Maybe you can show me that he's smelling him first. Exactly. What's this? A human? Should I trust him? He doesn't smell good. Exactly. Yes. And remember, the dogs love smelling butts. <laughs> and apparently, it's like a trusting thing for them. So, <laughs> exactly. You, you just, what you do there is like maybe you want to watch your dog acting a little bit and then you grab some of the gestures to do it later. But yeah, exactly. That was perfect. All right. Sue, you're getting, I want you to do the last one. Is a funny sloth. And you're delivering a punchline. It's a joke. So the joke is, what do you call an early modern sloth? A slow-mo sapien. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call an early modern sloth? <laughs> a slow mo sapien. <laughs> that was perfect. That was so much fun. So, see, that one, a sloth is one of those perfect characters where you can have so much fun and you were going slow with him and you were moving back and forth. You're trying to be playful and funny, but it's hard because you're you're a sloth. And so <laughs> it's like, you know, because being funny means you actually are energetic and you move fast, right? right? You see any comedians and they're talking super fast, blah, 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 blah. but then you have to put a sloth to be funny. Uh, that's a challenge I and mean, that was pretty cool to fun to, to watch and you see a lot of us most of us were laughing like smiling right so just have fun with it yes all right um i think we're i mean my clock says is 142 we can i think we can leave it for questions that sounds okay i mean i have more exercises but it would take us longer I think that's perfect. Let's go ahead. Um, and if it's, if it's okay, um, key, Dean, yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah. You're reading my mind. All right. So this is a great Q and a time. Think of a question that you have, and you can either use a reaction down below and raise your hand. Um, I may need a little help uh, because I'm not seeing everybody. And for some reason I can't, there's no other screen for me. So if maybe David Brock can help me with the calling of the names. Um, so, yep. So Jane McDaniels raising her hand first. Go ahead, Jane. I always have a question. <laughs> um, Carolina, what is the most difficult character to play? What have you found really, really worked on? Oh, difficult characters to play. Mm, the sad ones are difficult to play. 
um, because I really feel it in my skin. So I sometimes I even tear up a little. So I tried, for instance, with a sad, you, you can't avoid a sad character. You can't avoid a sad moment in because, and that's like not telling a story. Of course you have to tell it. Um, but what I try to do is um, if I'm for some reason connected with the character, I will try to work a little bit of like, I do my crying at home if it's getting me really. So I try to get it out. Uh, so it doesn't happen on stage because my my voice had uh, kind of like, oh, and gone like this sometimes when I'm delivering a, like a, a punchline that is very sad, but is very powerful and stuff like that. And I don't want that to happen on stage. So I tried to, you know, get it done at, at home. But if it's really having a, I'm having a hard time because like I said before, and I think uh, Veronica maybe can correct me. Um, I, I uh, Once I heard, I think at a, we were talking and we choose the stories that a lot of times reflect who we are and what we are. So a lot of ourselves is in those stories, is in the characters. So it's hard, even if you're like portraying a mischievous one, there's a little mischievous in you. If you portray a sad one or an angry one, there's a little bit of you in there. So what I tried to do is to adjust maybe uh, dialogues. Uh, so it doesn't maybe um, trigger a moment where I also tear up, for instance. I like the mischievous ones. I like even the angry ones because I know I can deliver them well without getting angry or something, but the sad ones to me are the hardest. Uh, the ones that are victims in somehow are the hardest for me because uh, sometimes I take it kind of personally maybe. And, and I don't want people, I want people to connect with the story and they can connect with the character too, but I don't want them to start tearing up in the middle of the story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's it. I don't know if I answered your question. I mean, we all are different. So it, it could be for some other person, it could be that uh, an angry character will be difficult for them. But for me, it will be a sad one. Fabulous. Karen, will, Karen Archer will be next and then Dean. Erlina, you answered this very well um, during your workshop uh, talking, but I'm working on a story that has um, dramatic differences between the characters. So one of them is very calm and collected and she doesn't have very many lines. So I want to portray that. And I think if I understand you, what she does do say and do is slow down quite a bit. She's calm and in control. And then another character is almost the opposite and easily excited. And at one part in the story, there's a fire and he's overreacting to that. But I guess my question is, do you have suggestions in a story, something like that, where your characters are really telling the story, uh, how to really bring those characters alive? Yeah, I can, like the easiest one, I think is the excitable one, because um, you can just grab a kid or, turn a cartoon on and you see a bunch of excitable characters there, right? Um, but for instance, the belly button monster is an excitable one because he's like, oh, 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 oh. so a lot of the reactions are in their mouth, big mouths, big hands, open, wide. You maybe jump a little, but don't exhaust yourself because that's a tricky thing with the very happy or very um, like um, energetic characters that maybe you put a lot of energy and you ended up tired as the narrator too. So you don't want to do that either. So you have to control his emotions too. They have to be short, explosive, oh explosive, but they have to be controlled because then you get tired. And it happened to me. Sometimes I'm doing a, a, an exciting one and I ended up being like, I mean, that guy just wore me out. And I can't do that on stage because you can end up being the one worn out. So can you see me, Brenda? Okay. okay. I'm sorry. Um, now with the calm one, I wouldn't go too slow because he might look or sound. Uh, this is a word that we shouldn't be saying, but um, 
he might sound like a simpleton. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to get uh, the calm person look like a simpleton, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. you should not go too slow with him. I would go with someone that is collected, that is like, he's calm, he's serious, he knows who he is, he doesn't need to go all the, I just go, chill. I think you're overreacting. That's not how you do it. You maybe give it a little bit of fun too. Maybe he can make fun of the one that is a little too hyperactive. Like, I think you're gonna, that is gonna blow in your face. That's not gonna turn out. But I mean, it is your choice. Uh, so I wouldn't go too slow with them. Because also you see the kids and you, you uh, talk with kids that are collected and serious and chill and cool. They don't go that slow. They're pretty smart and have very witty too, but they say what they say and that's it. That's the end of the discussion. There's no more reaction after that. And they have these punchlines that they like, they kill you after that. It's like, you know, but that is a serious collective type of person too. And make it a little fun so it's not boring. Um, yeah, that's what I would do, I think. Thank you. Perfect. All right, Dean. Um, do you have any comments about males doing female characters and females doing male characters? I don't. I mean, um, forgetting his name, but he's uh, he's friends with Bill Lepp. Yeah, is the guy that mm, does all this um, singing, uh, all the whistles that are so good. Oh, Anyone remember his um, name? Last name Oft. Um, uh, forgetting his name. Andy Austin. Andy, see, Andy, Andy, Andy. He does his uh, aunt, oh, right? Oh, oh, oh. And, and is hilarious. Hilarious. Now, you have to be careful which woman is, which woman is that you, or female is that you're portraying. I, I would go into that. It's like, who is the one that you're portraying? Um, but if it's not, like offensive or if it's just having fun maybe you're portraying your mother your friend you know that is okay that is okay and it would be extremely fun to watch too because a man delivering a female voice is is funny uh now a woman delivering a male's voice is not that funny for some reason but i try to make it funny because and that's when i i use a lot of my um gestures you know, um, now a lot of the guys in my stories, some are, some are, most of them are a little villains, but a lot of them are mischievous too, which I love the mischievous, like a crocodile, he's mischievous and the voice is, <laughs> didn't the other animals tell you that that is a, <laughs> a little bit of a forbidden question? See, the voice is, that's my best male voice, but it's not that like weird. And it does sound like a crocodile little and mysterious and it's about to, you know, eat someone. So I'm totally okay with portraying like the opposite genders, um, but you have to choose which ones too. There could be someone, one that is untouchable by society. So I wouldn't go that route. But if when you go with animals, no one is going to, I mean, it's, especially if it's for children. And if it's someone in your family, no one is going to say anything at all because it's your family, right? So any other questions? Yes. <laughs> so I am um, portraying an older woman, which actually shouldn't be hard because I am an older woman. <laughs> but... It is hard for me. Her name's Maggie May. I love her. She's an optimist, but somehow I want to bring bring into her, the picture her wrinkles as she smiles because she's an optimist. And I'm telling this story right now as a third person. So mm -hmm. every once in a while, Maggie May will speak up. And I just would love to hear just an, should I have an old person's voice or somehow, I mean, I have wrinkles, but I don't want to put fake wrinkles to make it obvious. So, and I can't, I don't want to get too close. <laughs> Help me out. What can I do with Maggie May? She is an optimist. She's not a grump. She's not a witch. 
she's just an old, old, old person who's getting up every day, doing what she needs to do and, and seeing everything at its best. From what I'm hearing, I think Maggie Mae wants to speak for herself. I think she wants to tell the story. I would go first person. Now there's, it's tricky to do first persons and, and I mean, third person is the safe way to go, right? He did this, she did that, that's it. I mean, I don't have much of connection with that person. When you go first person, you connect so much with the character and you get everybody to connect with you. So if she's an optimist, I would go first person. I feel like she wants to, to own the stage. Uh, the tricky part with first persons is if you do a spooky story and uh, they tend to be very uh, eerie and weird and I, I would not do it. But if it's in this case, um, uh, I, I mean, I, I, Carolina wouldn't do it, but it could work for other people. But I feel like Maggie, Maggie May, Maggie, mm -hmm. she wants to be the first person. I wouldn't try too hard on the wrinkles. You don't, I mean, I, I do a lot of old ladies and I mean, I can right now do it too hard, but what I do is more with my voice and I go down a little bit because to be a, the, in society, the idea of an, of an elder, especially a, an older woman is someone that's fragile and is a small, but is also strong, right? Yes. So it, it's just fragile because she's not 20 anymore. But what I would go, what I usually do is, don't worry about my dear. Mm, you got it, baby. That is perfect. And so it's very caring, and her her gestures are very close to her, because she's a grandmother, likely. So she's about to take care of someone, and the voice is what delivers, right? Now you will have to rehearse a lot so you find a good elder voice that will not hurt you that's it but I think I saw someone doing it lately um, at a festival and it worked perfectly and they were like making the voice because that's not how they talk and it worked really well and it, that person was doing an elder okay I will try that thank you so much and it looks like Venora is raising her hand yes Venora so with if you're doing a personal story um, in the first voice, uh, for instance, my, I tell my grandmother's story and she lived to be 107 and she was still in her right mind. And so I've noticed a lot of people uh, when they tell stories, they the, the, the person is uh, is slower and um, and they they sometimes their bodies um, have changed and so they have had uh, different age they have aged let's say it that way they have aged uh, fast maybe but when but my grandmother wasn't like that and so when I see people. Uh, portraying uh, uh, persons that way, I always, they want me to tremble, do the tremble, and so, but, but, but she didn't do that. So is it better then for me to do it that way or to do it the way Mama Della did? Mama Della went up three flights of stairs every day. And she, I mean, even, even at that age. <laughs> and so, and she, all kinds of things, but um, so how do you handle that? I mean, if you're gonna portray it like her, then portray it like her. Don't change it for another person she was not. Now, if you want her to be very different from you who are the narrator, uh, because at some point maybe you are introducing the story. Let's say you're doing the story in first person, right? So you're turning into your grandma. But right. at the beginning, you may have an introduction. And just like you did, you said, my grandma lived up to 107 and she was a completely different woman than anybody would. You would expect an elder at 107 to be this and that. And, and then you can portray all the things that society that we all think a, hundred, a person of 107 would be. 
And then you say, but she was not like that. Let me or let her tell her story. And then you change into this person that was 107, but actually was talking and acting like she was 30 and 40, right? So I would say you still need that distinction. So I would add an intro, the intro where you're saying, this is what people think of a person of 107, that she would be like this, and she would talk like this, and she would have a high this high pain here in this other world. But that was not my grandmother. My grandmother was like this. And then you room, you wow them with your grandmother. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. I've, I haven't done it in a while, but I used to do it all the time. And I, I used a, a song before I told a story, you know, and then matter of fact, I, I was at a church and, and the person was helping me up the stairs because they thought I was that person, and I was like, you know, but anyway, but thanks. Yeah, I mean, you still can use the song, uh, but I think it would be very funny if you if you show the audience that this is what you think of a person of 107, and you portray all the stereotypes, mm -hmm. all the things that you that we all think that come with that age. That actually some of them are true for some people, but they're not true or were not true for your grandmother. And then you jump into this person that is energetic, that is full of life, that can handle herself on her own that does all this kind of wonderful things so that would be like that would be a, a lot of, it's gonna surprise a lot of people and it might even give them a lot of hope too because of course a lot of times we we let what society tells you that we're supposed to be um uh take take us so i'm supposed to be this fragile person, this sweet person, but maybe I'm not like that. <laughs> so your grandma was supposed to be fragile, not doing this, not doing that. And, but she, she did her, she was her own woman. And, and that's something that a lot of people want to hear. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And sadly, and I mean, quite sadly, our workshop has completed such wonderful questions and Carolina your answers have been fabulous there's so much for us to learn and this is just a start and and you got us going thank you so much Carolina and thank you to everyone who participated we love seeing your beautiful faces your handsome faces your voices and your gestures are amazing we hope to see you on stage sometime there are so many guilds here in Texas and in Oklahoma um, and we have them all listed on the, Te the Tejas Storytelling Association's website. So please, if you're not part of a guild, join the guild. Or if you would like to come visit any of our guilds, we all would welcome you. Many of us are still virtual. SASA is hybrid now, so we're virtual and live. So um, please. Um, go to all of us and if you'd like to save your chat there's those three dots if you go to the chat box there's three dots if you click on that you can go to save chat and again if you want to donate we would love for that to happen so we can continue doing this um with that said carolina you were marvelous i wish we had another 10 hours of you every day um so you're so wonderful um, and everyone else thank you again we hope to see you soon there'll be other guild gatherings and uh, Rick Davis, who is our upcoming president, will um, communicate with us as he always does through our membership. But you can always go to the Facebook page with Tejas also and SASA. Well, with that said, I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. And again, for all the tech hosts, oh my gosh, you were lifesavers today. Yeah, thank you all for staying, for coming back. And I hope you all um, had fun. Because that's the whole thing about this is just have fun, enjoy it. Yes. Bye, everybody. Have